Hey everyone, welcome to Judging for the Win. I'm Dave, and this is my daily ruling. Today, we're going to be talking about the Unearth mechanic, which is another returning mechanic in the Brothers War set. Originally introduced in Alara, this is a really favorite mechanic of mine, and I have a lot of really great memories from this mechanic when I was playing it in Limited the first time it was debuted. Okay, so let's take a little bit of a look at the comprehensive rules for what this mechanic says, and we can see that it's an activated ability. Right in the very first sentence, we've got some very important information about this ability. Uh, and this is probably one of the biggest things that I see people get tripped up on with this. Uh, and it really makes a lot of sense because many other things uh, in Magic that do similar types of stuff thematically uh, are actually worded not as activated abilities, but as casting a spell. So the conventional, uh, you know, kind of colloquial description of unearth as basically just flashback for creatures, uh, flashback would be considered casting a spell, uh, not activating an ability. And so uh, many other types of abilities that do uh, the same sort of thing as, as what unearth does uh, are, are worded in such a way that they are considered to be casting a spell, but not unearth. Unearth is an activated ability, so you would be able to stop an unearth with a pithing needle, however a meddling mage would be completely impotent against it. So that is one kind of interesting and, and unique thing uh, about unearth. Uh, it uh, functions while the card with unearth is in a graveyard, and it means cost, return this card from your graveyard to the battlefield, it gains haste, exile it at the beginning of your next end step, and if it would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. Uh, activate this only as a sorcery. So that's, uh, you know, there, there's a few things to unpack there, but the, the biggest one I think would be that, that it's an activated ability. Now, for the most part, it interacts pretty sensibly with some, some stuff, but there are like a few kind of scenarios where I think the answer is like, you know, not intuitively obvious, or at least not obvious like the first time that you read it. So uh, let's take a look at this this example here with uh, Flickr and uh, my, my OG friend, Mr. Dregscape Zombie. Uh, so if you are to Flickr a card that you unearthed, uh, we'll, we'll take a look. It says, it says to remove it from the game and then return it to the battlefield under its own control. So let's see. If it would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. Now guess what? We're not trying to put it anywhere else. We're actually exiling it with the flicker. And so that means that that is actually not going to do anything. The, the clause that, that I just highlighted there. Uh, it's not going to do anything. Rather, it's just going to let Flickr do the thing that it was originally going to do, which is to remove it from the game and then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So actually, if you unearth the Dregscape zombies and then you Flickr the Dregscape zombies, then the Flickr is going to resolve entirely normally. It'll be exactly the same result as if you just flickered a normal Dregscape zombies that was just on the battlefield because you cast it normally. Uh, and so that has a couple of other kind of exciting consequences because you might remember if you change zones then that causes you to become a brand new object with no memory or connection to your previous self and so that would mean that after the flicker has finished resolving the dregscape zombies that is on the battlefield is no longer considered to be the dregscape zombie that you unearthed so you will not have to exile it at the end of turn and you will also uh, not have that clause on there that says if it would leave the battlefield you exile it instead so it would just uh, if you lightning bolted that Dregscape zombie, it would just go to your graveyard like normal. Uh, it also would not have haste anymore, uh, so so bear that in mind. But for the, the most part, uh, the flicker play would be just pure upside. Um, so here's a, another, another uh, kind of interesting uh, card that has to do with that same sort of uh, logic with with the zone change you might have noticed that meticulous excavation actually has like kind of a weird wording on it so it says uh, to return target permanent to its owner's hand and if it has unearth then instead you would exile it and return it to its owner's hand uh, so you maybe were looking through the spoilers or looking at this card and wondering why it said that and that's the reason why uh, the reason is because uh, of that clause with unearth that says that if you unearth something then you would uh, exile it if you were to put it in any zone other than the battlefield from the battlefield. And so if you were to unearth a Dregscape zombie and then use the meticulous excavation uh, ability on it, then uh, without that kind of weird wording on it uh, with the, the extra special exception carved out for if it has unearth, uh, without that wording, then what would actually happen is instead of returning it to your hand, you would exile it because that's what you would do if you would go to any zone other than the battlefield. Uh, and so with the way that it is templated, uh, this, this card will actually do what most people probably expect it should do, which is uh, to return the unearthed card to your hand. Uh, that will be the net result of exiling it and then returning it to your hand. Uh, whereas if you did not have that weird kind of uh, clause on there, then it would actually just exile it and it would not return it to your hand. Uh, 
so that that is kind of interesting. Uh, notice that it is kind of uh, a little bit overdone here. And, and what I mean by that is is if it has unearthed, uh, then you exile it in return. So if if it has unearthed and you played it normally, then there would, of course, not be any reason why you couldn't just return it to your hand. Uh, but uh, having unearthed at all, uh, you know, the, the answer doesn't get changed in between uh, uh, whether you return it to your hand or exile it and then return it to your hand, unless in the case of it, it was actually unearthed. So uh, if it, it could have been potentially worded something like, if it was unearthed, then exile it and return it to its owner's hand. But I think it reads cleaner the way that they have it here. Uh, so I actually do like that templating. That's that's a, a, a cool solution to a problem that most people probably would not even know existed unless they uh, specifically sat down and thought about it. Um, okay, so another another kind of interesting interaction with, with unearthed would be the, the dress down. Now, I actually did a video a while back uh, where I examined the relationship between the, the dash mechanic and dress down. And there are some very similar themes uh, with that. And so you could take a look at that video if you wanted to, to look at this sort of situation in a little bit more depth. Uh, that being said, the, the key takeaways with unearth, uh, first of all, it is possible uh, to unearth something out of your graveyard while there is a dress down out. And the reason for that would be because dress down says that creatures lose all abilities. So in other words, creatures on the battlefield lose all their abilities. Now, with the, the Dregscape zombie being in your graveyard, it is not affected by dress down. It's only going to be affected after it returns to the battlefield. So you would be able to activate the unearth ability from the graveyard just fine. That works entirely normally. Uh, now, when you get onto the battlefield, of course, things are not going to work entirely normally uh, because of dress down. So let's take another look at the, the comprehensive rules, and we'll, we'll look at it each, each part in turn, because it turns out that there actually is a, a difference in between like how some of these are, are affected by dress down and how some of them uh, are not. So uh, we return this card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Okay, that part, obviously, that works fine. Uh, it gains haste, okay? Now, what this means uh, is, is that the the activated ability when it resolves is going to put a continuous effect onto the the thing that you just unearthed and that continuous effect is going to be giving haste which is an ability uh, to that unearthed creature now dress down is also going to be acting uh, with a continuous effect on that unearthed creature and it's going to be trying to remove all abilities from it and so we can see there are two different continuous effects that both want to uh, either add or remove an ability uh, and that means that they both apply in the same layer uh, now, there is actually no dependency in between those two continuous effects. Uh, I made a video about dependencies, and you can check that out if you'd like a, a fuller explanation for why that is. But for now, uh, I think we can all just take my word for it that there is no dependency there. Uh, and so what that would mean is that actually uh, it would come down to timestamps. So if the unearth ability resolved before the dress down uh, entered the battlefield, uh, then that would mean that the unearth ability has a earlier timestamp. So it would be giving haste first and then dress down would be taking haste away. Uh, on the other hand, if the dress down had an earlier timestamp than the unearth, so if, for example, the dress down was already in play and then you unearth the creature, uh, then that would mean that the dress down timestamp would be earlier than the unearth timestamp. And so that would mean that the dress down would be removing all the abilities first. And then after that happened, the unearth creature would gain haste. Uh, so the, the unearthed creature actually would have haste under that scenario. Okay, so we'll, if we look at the, the next sentence here, it says, exile it at the beginning of the next end step. Now, that is kind of interesting because you can notice it's, it's not worded the same way, right? It doesn't say it gains exile this creature at the beginning of the next end step. Um, rather, it, it just says, like, exile at the beginning of the next end step. So that is actually, the exiling is not an ability that the creature has. Uh, and it's also not contingent upon the creature having unearthed. Uh, rather, this is just something, one of the effects that happens when this activated ability resolves, this unearthed ability, is that it sets up in the game somewhere a triggered ability that says, at the beginning of the next end step, we're going to exile this thing that, that we returned to the battlefield when we were doing the unearthing. Uh, so that being the case, this is not an ability that is on the unearth creature, and so therefore that is not something that the dress down will stop. And so, in fact, the unearth creature will be getting exiled at the beginning of the next end step. Uh, likewise, the if it would leave the battlefield exile instead of putting it anywhere else, that part is also not a uh, ability that is inherent to the creature or something that is uh, only functioning as long as the creature has the unearth ability. Uh, dress down will take the unearth ability away, but that does not mean that when this activated ability resolved, 
uh, we're going to take away this this thing that happened during the resolution of that activated ability. And so that means that the uh, leaving the battlefield would indeed result in the creature getting exiled uh, instead of going anywhere else, even with the dress down out. So that's that's kind of interesting. Um, uh, again, dress down is, is kind of an unusual uh, interaction with a lot of those. You have to read very carefully to, to be able to distinguish what, what is, is like a, a gains or has ability, uh, which is something dress down can take away and which which is not. So that, that would be the way that that interacts. Okay, so next we're going to take a look at defabricate. So um, of course, uh, uncommon from the Brothers War set. So we, we probably would expect to see this sort of thing. Uh, so counter target artifact or enchantment spell. So like if we had a Phyrexian Dragon Engine, uh, one of the coolest creatures uh, uh, that has Unearth, um, we know that the Unearth is not considered to be casting a spell. Uh, so that would mean that if you were to, to Unearth a Phyrexian Dragon Engine, which is an artifact, you would not be able to counter that Unearthing with the first mode, the part where you can counter target artifact or enchantment spell. Not possible because, again, unearthing is not considered to be casting a spell. Now, you would be able to hit it with this other mode, and that's because unearthing is considered to be an activated ability, uh, as we saw on that earlier slide. And so what that would mean is that you would be able to play the defabricate if someone unearthed a creature, uh, and if that happens, then that activated ability would be countered, which means none of its effects would happen. The creature that you tried to unearth would just remain in the graveyard um, and, and that would be the, the end of the story. So the really interesting part about how Defabricate works with Unearth, though, uh, would be if, if we looked at this other thing where it says we could also counter a triggered ability. So you know what a triggered ability is? Is, is this thing where it says to remove it from the game at the end of turn. Uh, and so what that means uh, is is that that, because it uses the word at, does count as a triggered ability. And if you if you recall, uh, if we look at the actual oracle uh, text, or the, the comprehensive rules text, rather, of, of what Unearth means, it says exile it at the beginning of the next end step. So that's the actual text of the ability that, that we would be countering here. Now, if you notice something very interesting, um, you know, yes, you do see the word at, so that means that we are in fact dealing with a triggered ability here. But the, the really other interesting word here is the word next, right? Because there's only one next end step, right? Like there's only one end step that is the next end step after this unearth ability has resolved. And so that would mean that if somehow the one triggered ability that wants you to exile it were to get countered, then that would mean that there is not going to be anything trying to exile it at the beginning of any subsequent end step, right? So we, we already dodged the bullet and there was only one bullet uh, because there's only one next end step. And so that would mean that uh, if we were to defabricate that triggered ability, uh, that would mean that we would not have to worry about it getting exiled at the beginning of any future end steps. So that, that actually works really well with the, the unearth mechanic. Now, the thing that makes you exile it if it would leave the battlefield, that is a replacement effect. So that is not possible to stop with defabricate. So if, if you were to unearth and then defabricate at end of turn this way, then you would still have that situation where if it would leave the battlefield, then it would get exiled instead. But you, otherwise, you would be able to, to bring it back permanently. So that's very nice. Um, okay, uh, another another thing that a lot of people asked me about um, was actually how this, this mechanic would interact with phasing. And the answer is actually very similar. Um, so, if you were to unearth the Dregscape Zombies and then slip out the back on it, then of course you would be putting the plus one plus one counter on it, and then it phases out, right? So, we have the exact same sort of situation going on here, because at the end of the turn, uh, that triggered ability, and remember the triggered ability doesn't exist on the Dregscape Zombie, it exists out in the game somewhere, and it gets set up when the Unearth ability resolves. And that's important because that triggered ability is still going to be out in the game somewhere during that next end step. If it was a triggered ability that was on the Dregscape Zombie itself, then it would not be, the Dregscape Zombie would not be in play, or you know the game wouldn't see it being in play for that ability to trigger. Uh, but because of the way that it actually does function, which is being out in the game land somewhere, there's absolutely no reason at all why that triggered ability could not trigger and resolve just fine. Now, there is something kind of weird that's going to happen, which is that when it does resolve, that triggered ability is going to say, okay, you got to exile Dragscape Zombie. And then the game is going to scratch its head and think like, huh, that's weird. There was a card called Dragscape Zombie out here, but I don't see it anymore. Uh, because, of course, when you phase out, the game does not consider that permanent to exist anymore. That being the case you would not have to sacrifice the Dragscape Zombie. 
And remember what we said, there's only one next end step, which means that you would not have to sacrifice at the beginning of any future end steps. So the slip out the back would also be able to uh, permanently save uh, the dregscape zombie. Now, there is one uh, other kind of interesting difference. Remember what we said with the, the flicker case, right? With flicker, uh, it would not have haste anymore and it would not have this um, room, uh, unearth um, thing where it, where it uh, exiles if you would leave the battlefield. Remember we said the flicker, because it changed zones, became a new object and so the game would stop having that uh, on it. So we dodged, we, we don't have to uh, remove it from the game at end of turn because we dodged the one bullet because there's only one next end step. But we also did not change zones, which is what we did do in the, the flicker example. And so with that being the case, we still do have on the, the dregscape zombie the uh, part where if it would leave the battlefield, then it goes to the exile zone instead of going to any other zone. So it, it actually works out um, kind of like a, a hybrid in between the, the flicker case and, and you know some of the other cases that we had talked about. Uh, but that, that is the, the way that phasing would work. So uh, to, to summarize, the, the creature would not be exiled at the end of turn, any of the turns, because it's phased out during the one end step where that triggered ability triggers. Um, but you would uh, have the ability uh, that exiles it if it would leave the battlefield for any reason, uh, stay on there. Uh, so that, that, is, that is how the, the phasing ability would, would interact with the Unearth. And that is actually all of the questions that I had come up with uh, regarding this mechanic. If you have any other questions that I did not get to, definitely uh, leave a comment down. Uh, I will do my best to, to get through as many as I possibly can and, and provide answers to, to all of those other questions. But that is all I have for you today. How did you do? Join me again next time for another daily ruling, but until then, I hope you have a great day.